this is my toolbox. And as you can see, it's a little bit crusty, a little bit rusty. It has multiple different layers of paint on it. At one time it was a darker green, and now it's a lighter green. It looks like it may have been a white, unless that was a primer. I don't know. It wasn't ever brown. That's just rust that's starting to develop. Okay, maybe that's rust that's been there for, well, maybe 40 years or more. But that's okay, the toolbox is built really well. Whoever built this toolbox actually engineered it extremely well. There's a quarter inch plate that runs uh, across the top here. It's on some extremely heavy duty casters. There's even an incorporated pedal brake down here on the side. You shove your foot on that and it locks it. Uh, the drawers are pretty stout. Uh, the whole unit is pretty stout. It just kind of needs cleaned up and freshened up a bit. I really don't know the history on it. I do know my dad bought this many, many years ago and pretty much as you see it now is how he purchased it. It was kind of rusty green and he didn't pay a whole lot for it, but it was a big toolbox and it served its purpose. And as you can see here, my organizational skills are absolutely pr no, okay, they stink. I just kind of throw all my sockets in one and my wrenches in another and it's just a horrible mess and it takes you forever to figure out what wrench you need and you gotta dig through all the sockets and you never find the one you need, you find all the ones you don't need until you need them. So there will be a part two of this video and it's gonna be how I organize this toolbox. You're definitely gonna like and subscribe and you're gonna wanna see that video because I think you're gonna like it. Now obviously the first thing we need to do is get the junk off the toolbox and get the stuff out of the toolbox and we'll drag the toolbox out into the center of the shop where we can clean it up and fix it and make it look nice and pretty. I am a little surprised at how crudely this box was made. When I say crudely, I should be careful with that word because quite honestly, I always felt like this box was built like a tank and you can see all these welds are just kind of spot welded. Uh, it's relatively thin metal, but again, this toolbox is so old. I, I know it's at least 50 years old. It's probably way older than that and it's held up really well and all indications are this was in some type of uh, industrial environment. reason I want to say that is you can, you can tell the way the door shut, there's actually a bar uh, that sits in here actually you padlock the bar in it pokes in the bottom one down here and it keeps the, the door shut so your tools don't walk away I'd show you the bar but I put it away so I wouldn't lose it and um, well I've I've lost it it doesn't really have a real set of drawer glides it just has these angle irons that are just kind of welded in here and it just kind of flat slides across the top you would think it wouldn't open up very easy but if you keep these clean and looped up a little bit, they actually slide pretty easy. So there's really no reason for me to upgrade it as it's adequate enough for me. Now the guy that built his own toolbox, he thought about a few things. There was something here that he must have hung in the door. This little strap here actually kept the bar that kept the front toolbox locked. You could store it here so you wouldn't lose it. Maybe I should have stored mine there. And then on the other side, I don't know, something hung here and it tucked down in this little pocket. I'll probably never know. And you can see at one point the toolbox was red. The hinges appear to be nothing more than standard household door hinges. They're just kind of spot welded in place on the doors, as you can see. And on the side, they kind of welded around the edge. Seems to work. It's very old and it's held up all these years. I'm not going to change that either. I really have no idea how old this toolbox is. The only clue is I found a sticker on one of the wheels that says the Divine Brothers Company. And at the very bottom, you can see Utica, New York, USA. So some might say it's not really that great of a toolbox. However, I can say that this toolbox truly has stood the test of time and I'd like to keep it around a little bit longer. So the first thing we're going to need to do is fill some of these holes and it's really not a necessity other than dirt, dust, and metal shavings keep falling down through these holes and they land in the first top drawer. So we're going to fill them up using my trusty buzz box here. Someday I'll upgrade but for right now the buzz box is going to work just fine. We'll fill these holes up, sand them down flush. After I welded the hole shut I just took a flap disc and just kind of grinded it semi flush. It doesn't have to be perfect. The top of this isn't perfect anyhow. It has a curve. So it's never going to be a perfect worktop, but it's better without the holes because we won't have stuff falling inside that top toolbox. In my opinion, the best way to remove paint is with an abrasive, if you can, such as this soft brass brush here. Unfortunately, the paint is just so hard and so thick that I just really can't get much headway done with it. So what I'm finding is a little bit of stripper over the top of it. Give it a good 15 minutes and then the brush takes it right off. So we're going to take all the paint off the cabinet. Then we're going to go to the faces of the drawers and remove all the paint as well. We'll remove the door handles as well and freshen those up. So the entire box has been stripped down to bare metal. And 
and I will say one thing, that was a tougher job than I expected, but it's done, and you know what they say, hard work comes good rewards, so I'm expecting a toolbox that will last the rest of my life, and I plan on living to be a very old man, so that means we have to do a good job with this. Now, the little black spots and stuff, there was some pretty deep pitting and some rust here and there, and what I did was I, after I got all the paint off, I used some rust cutter, kind of wiped it down with this, and uh, we're just kind of letting it sit, and what it does is it just basically stops the oxidation, and you can paint right over the top of it. The next step is to paint it with the primer, and I like to use this Rust-Oleum primer. I just think it works really well. I am going to leave the top bare. It was bare when my dad got this toolbox, and I've had it. It's been bare. It'll be just fine. We'll, we'll kind of treat it with some oil, and that's pretty much what I've always done is I just kind of went back and did kind of a, a light sanding on it and put some oil in it, and it'll last a very long time like that. If I put paint on it, it's just going to scrape off because I use this as a pretty rough top to work on things. I beat on things with hammers and as you can see it's all pitted from years of heavy use and that's kind of how I prefer to keep this top. Now that there is two thick coats of primer on this, it's ready to paint. And the game plan right now is kind of a gray hammer on. I really like this hammer on. It holds up pretty well. And then we're going to follow up some trim work with some black Rust-Oleum hammer on as well. Now the secret to hammer on paint is A, shake it shake it and shake it some more. You need to stir it really well. I actually shake the can extremely vigorously for at least two minutes and then I shake it about every 30 seconds of use. And then the next secret is extremely thin coats. So when I spray mine on, it's about like this and it takes multiple coats to make it look really nice. And if you do it like this, it'll be a nice even hammer on paint all the way through. Now, it's been a day or so, but there are actually five coats of paint on this. And in fact, you can see over here where it's still kind of wet. You can see where it's kind of glossy and not glossy. This paint does take a while to dry, so we're going to let this cure, and then we're going to work on the drawers themselves. The drawers really don't have any major issues. They, they're a little beat up, and we can straighten that out. But the major issue, and it's really not even a major issue, is there's some surface rust all around the edges. There is some carpet in the bottom, and uh, when I look under the carpet, it's in pretty good shape considering the age. So it was never treated inside, and uh, we're just going to kind of knock the rust down a little bit, wipe it clean. We'll take some rust cutter and treat the rust. And then we'll just go over the top of everything with some black paint and we'll leave it as is and it should last many years like that. The outside still needs, um, you know, the paint removed and we're going to take those handles off and freshen them up a bit as well. And now a scout crafter would say, you remember what this project looked like before. Here's my favorite part. I consider this done. Now, Scott Crafter, if you don't know anything about his channel, I'm going to put a link down below. He is the king of tool restoration, and he does it in a style like no other. He pretty much tells a story, and it's very entertaining as he restores his tools. So check his link out down below. Considering what I had to work with, I am absolutely thrilled with how this restoration project turned out. On the inside, the drawers turned out pretty good. I did use some new handles that I found online that were relatively cheap. They look a little cockeyed and crooked, and uh, well, that's because they are, but I didn't want to drill any new holes, so I just used the old holes that were there. It is just a toolbox. It's clean, and it lasts a long time, and that's what I was after. I wasn't after perfection. On the inside, I gave it a nice fast coat of black paint, and you can see I got some overspray when I painted the front gray, but I really didn't care. I just wanted a fresh coat of paint inside to just kind of keep things from rusting up, and I think the finished project is absolutely fantastic. Now, somewhere near the beginning of this video, I made a comment that there would be a part two, and part two will be how we're going to organize the contents that were in this toolbox. And if you forgot what those contents looked like, well, I just kind of dumped them out on the floor, probably not my smartest idea, when I restored the toolbox. So all of this stuff has to go back in, in some type of organized fashion. Now, a couple of products we'll be talking about. One is actually called the Toolbox Widget. They make a bunch of organizers. It's absolutely a fantastic company. I know you're going to like this product, so definitely like and subscribe because you don't want to miss that video. And then the other company that I want to talk about is Ulsa Tools. They make a socket organizer that is pretty much like no other. Both these companies are outstanding and they make products that's really going to make life easy with the organization they're going to bring to a toolbox. You're really going to like them. Have I asked you to um, like and subscribe yet? 
Normally on my channel, we do a lot of restoration, we do a lot of repair, we build a lot of things, we fix a lot of things, and occasionally we slip in a tool review. So please take a look at some of my other videos. You might find something you may be interested in, or at the very least, be slightly entertained.